the archaeologist Sergio Gomez apologized for his absence and sends his regards from Mexico. 45 kilometers from Mexico City, Teotihuacan is uh, East Teotihuacan, where one of the most complex societies that existed in pre Hispanic Mexico was developed. It is recognized worldwide by its three great civic religious complexes. The Pyramid of the Moon, the Pyramid of the Sun, and the Citadel, whose main buildings is the Pyramid of the Feathered Serpent. However, Teotihuacan is much more than these great monuments, which are connected by the Street of the Dead, a large avenue of more than five kilometers in length. At its apogee, the urban complex was composed of more than 2,000 architectural compounds, almost perfectly aligned and arranged in an orthogonal grid, which expressed the urban importance that the city had. Teotihuacan is a key site for the research of universal problems, such as the origin of social classes, systems of production, distribution and conception, religion, power structures, art as an aesthetic expression, and a means of communication, architecture, and urbanism, among many other aspects that are fundamental to understanding and explaining the development of humanity. Currently, Teotihuacan is the archaeological site with the largest area explored, although fieldwork has probably only taken place in a small percentage of a city that's once occupied almost 23 square kilometers, had a population of almost 200,000 inhabitants, and spread its dominance and culture throughout the territory of Mesoamerica. For centuries, it was the largest center of production, distribution, and conception in Mesoamerica. How did the city originate? How did development happen? What strategies did the state implement to expand its territory? And finally, why, after almost 600 years of growth, was the city of Teotihuacan abandoned? When we studied the first level of occupation, the main problems we have is that they were covered by late construction that prevent or limit their investigation. Because to access the oldest levels, we will have to destroy the most recent. This has been the problem for which we know very little of the most ancient stages of development. In this presentation, we'll make a synthesis of the processes at the origin of one of the most developed urban complexes that existed in Antiochia. The origins of Teotihuacan society date back to 400 BC, when small groups of people started occupying the valley and were engaged in agricultural production. The Teotihuacan Valley has a few exportable resources, no permanent waterway, or river, and exposed to a climate with a lot of risk for agriculture. Obsidian deposits are located just over 10 kilometers away and provide one of the few important resources for the city's economy. 200 years BCE, the primary rural settlement benefits from the construction of large hydraulic works aimed at increasing agricultural productivity. In 2009, we discovered two large water channels dug into the bedrock used to irrigate the fields. It was possible that by then there was an instead that led the construction of hydraulic works and at the same time was responsible for its maintenance and administration, generating a gradual concentration of power and the emergence of political and administrative institutions. The cultivation system developed in the agricultural phase include planting in small circular cavities dug into the bedrock, which were watered individually by hand, combined with a polyculture system. 
the integration of organic matter nourish the soil and improve agricultural productivity. It was a highly productive system that lasted until recent times. At that time, Teotihuacan was integrated into an extensive and ancient network of economic and social ties. The network remained linked to numerous sites that exploited a wide variety of resources. Teotihuacan exploited and changes obsidian from nearby deposits. Although as part of this network, it must have been just one among many, many more minor sites. Around 200 BCE, the valley began to have significant population growth. The eruption of the Popocatépetl volcano 100 kilometers away occurred between 50 BCE and 50 CE and affected many sites, generating significant migratory flow to Teotihuacan. Some elements suggest that the original population must have been made up of various ethno-linguistic groups that were attracted by the possibility of participating in the construction of the first great sanctuary in the Basin of Mexico. The urban complex probably began with the construction of three important religious civic complexes built during the first century CE. One to the north, where the Pyramid of the Moon is located, another where the Pyramid of the Sun will later be planed, and a third further to the south, where the citadel will be built. In the last 12 years, we have precisely explored most of one of the oldest sanctuaries that was built and occupied between 50 and 200 CE. Excavating the area of the large square of the citadel, we discovered the rest of the oldest occupation without affecting the most recent buildings. The new data gives us elements to understand the initial process of urban development. So it was demonstrated that shortly after the beginning of our era, an intense constructive process was initiated that will change the physiognomy of the valley. The great hydraulic works that were had used for the previous 200 years were closed and gradually the agricultural fields were invaded by the city. This process modified the way of life of the population, substituting food production of that of artisanal goods and services, thus adopting an urban way of life. In the first century CE, Teotihuacan stopped producing its own food. The state changed its economic policy, importing food instead of its production. The closure of the great hydraulic works was undoubtedly a decision made by the state, which had to develop a strategy that increased food supplies to feed an ever-growing population. An eruption of another volcano called Shitle buried Kukuriko between 245-315 CE, the most important city that existed at that time, leaving Teotihuacan without competitors in the network of economic links. Our hypo hypothesis is that Teotihuacan integrated the whole network of commercial links, positioning, positioning itself at the center of it. This must have brought great economic benefits. Two characteristics that we didn't know about the construction of the first century are the orientation and materials used. Previously, it was thought that Teotihuacan would have been built following the same orientation of 15 degrees east of the north. Today, however, we know that the orientation of the first public buildings was 11 degrees east of the north, with a difference of 4 degrees. It was generally believed that all buildings would have always been built using volcanic scoria. With our research, we know that this material was not used in the first time, but instead the builders used turf or volcanic ash and fired eastern bricks. This information will transform out the idea we had that the Teotihuacanos would have chosen this place 
because of the abundance of volcanic slime, since this material was not used in the construction of the first buildings. With few exportable resources, we believe that the choice of this place was due to symbolic religious reasons. The construction of the early stages of the Moon Pyramid began at this time, eventually having seven construction stages until reaching a monumental size. In the place where the Pyramid of the Sun would later be built, thick walls were located that Sugiyama said limited the public and or sacred space and would determine the location of the Great Pyramid. <coughs> Until a few years ago, it was argued that the city grew from north to south, but now we know that there is a passage The city had a much more homogeneous development and a part of the complex was also located at the south. During the second century of CE, there were already strong links to distant places that included Mayan sites, much older than Teotihuacan, located as far as 1,400 kilometers away. Relations with Mayan sites must have been between elites and will have had a political nature. The discovery of more than 130,000 objects in the tunnel under the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, many of which came almost exclusively from the Mayan area, indicated political ties between elites. These objects of high quality included large shells, jade, rubber, amber, skins of large felines, wolves, and cocoa seeds, among many other imported items. Around 200 or 250 CE, it occurred a change in what was already an important urban development. Very few fields remained on the outskirts of the city and the amount of food and other resources that were imported required large numbers of people to transport them. Three changes are important to note. The first one refers to the orientation of the city going from 11 to 15 degrees east of the magnetic north. Many buildings were intentionally destroyed to modify the orientation by only four degrees. Another important change was the use of a new building material. This material was volcanic slag or scoria, which is characterized by its lightness and hardness and relatively easy to cut with stone or wood tools. This was a technical innovation that got better construction. Thousands of residential and housing compounds were built using the new building material, following the same orientation and reproducing the same spatial distribution model with enclosed spaces around an open space. The pyramids of the sun and moon continued to increase in volume with the overlapping of bodies covering the former using precisely this new material. The moon pyramid reached 55 meters high, while the sun rose 65 meters with 210 meters per side at the base. Many of the residential compounds occupied by the families of the elite, as well as public and religious buildings, were distinguished by decoration with mural paintings. In most cases, alluding to religious elements, exaltation of lineages, and heraldic emblems. In one of them, we discovered the elements of the writing system, an aspect that could not be lacking in such a complex society. The entire city had a drainage system for the release of rainwater, while the water supply for daily consumption came from artisan wells located in common spaces. The third transcendent aspect of the city was its organization into neighborhoods. 
Since 1992, several architectural compounds were excavated over an area of 35,000 square meters in the neighborhood of La Ventilla. The information obtained from this investigation clarifies the formal structures and social organization of neighborhoods. Each neighborhood had public, administrative, and religious buildings. It was also composed of numerous apartment compounds occupied by some twelve men and others by the families of the elites. Each neighborhood had common spaces and a public square, which functioned at the, as a point of fusion and integration into community activities, a place where the temporary market was installed and where religious festivities, including the ball game, could be carried out. Political power was located in the temples, as well as in other public buildings from which the resources of the neighborhood were managed, collecting and channeling much of the wealth produced to a central authority. This authority would have used the resources for the realization of the large public infrastructure and for the support of the state apparatus and its institutions. The ever-growing allies were sustained by the products and exploitation of families dedicated to craft production. The growth of the city included the migration of varied ethnic groups that joined the city living in neighborhoods located on the periphery. Foreigners retained the tradition of their places of origin to consolidate the cohesion of the group, access to the resources that would allow them to survive, and maintain its capacity of political negotiation with the state that tolerated their presence. As the population increased, the city increased the volume of resources brought from distant regions such as the Gulf of Mexico, Oaxaca, Western Mexico, and especially the Mayan area. The numerous local elites needed to hold their class position through the use of luxury or prestige goods. So Teotihuacan extended its dominion territory to those places or regions where certain types of resources were obtained. The domain of Teotihuacan spread throughout the Mesoamerican territory. In southern Mexico and in what is now Guatemala, Almost 1,400 kilometers away, the Mayan culture developed in a territory with abundant and varied natural resources. The area was rich in jade and other minerals used in the manufacture of ornaments, amber, feathers, and skins of exotic animals, abundant cocoa and rubber plantings, among many others. In recent research, epigraphers recognized the presence and incursion of Teotihuacan militias with direct political interference in major Maya cities. The Petén region in the Maya area underwent political changes with the arrival of the Teotihuacanos, as well as the transformation and centralization of existing power structures. From the first century CE, Teotihuacan's ruling elite maintain political relations with sites in the Mayan area, as well as sites of the Pacific coast, the Central Islands, and Eastern Guatemala. There may have been an early commercial link, but it still would not have had a major impact on the economy of the city or the Mayan sites until later. The gradual increase and complexity of relations was due to Teotihuacan's interest in obtaining an increasing amount of resources for the manufacture of prestigious goals. The Teotihuacanos regarded the Maya region as a source of riches and avenues. The growth and economic boom of the city between the third and sixth centuries CE created and increased a larger class of local elites that required these types of goods. Teotihuacan wanted to control the valuable resources existing in the Maya area. This presence was so significant that it was recorded in Mayan stelae. The relations with the Maya lasted several centuries, but the famous entry of the Teotihuacanos in 378 CE 
wasn't even that impacted the political and economic life of several Mayan sites. The Teotihuacan presence must have an, an economic nature and a strong military component in which a character called Siyakak, a military leader sent by Teotihuacan, played an important role. The appearance of Teotihuacan iconographic elements anticipated with local elements is evidence of Teotihuacan's interference in the political life of Mayan sites. In Tikal, one of the most important Mayan cities, Fire is born, imposed as a ruler, Nunyak Ain, who was a son of a ruler of Teotihuacan called Atlatkawak. With the emergence of the Teotihuacan urban complex, a new way of life was inaugurated that was unprecedented in the history of Mesoamerica. The development dimensions and characteristics that came into being over several centuries were the result of a long process that began with the decision to suspend the agricultural production system, as well as the strategy of the state to position itself at the center for a huge network of economic and social links. The change in the orientation of the city demonstrates the power and authority that the state that had over the population. During the intense growth of the city, it was important to maintain control of the local population by organizing the city into neighborhoods, as well as control the elites of many sites in a vast region. The economic development of the city generating an increase in local elites whereby Teotihuacan saw control to resources that only existed in far-flung places. This hypothesis has an explanatory theoretical basis linking to the characteristics of the mode of production that we propose existed in Teotihuacan. In the first societies with class, the exploitation of luxury goods appears as a necessary condition for the elites to maintain and justify their dominant position and the exploitation of the politically subordinate class. Precious resources such as jade, feathers, animal skins, big shells, mercury, rubber, amber, and cocoa, among other materials from the Mayan area, had to be of paramount interest to Teotihuacan and the main reason for military incursion and imposition of rulers in important Maya cities. A process occurred in Teotihuacan with elements similar to what we call globalization today, in which not only products are moved from one place to another, but also ideas are imposed, adopted, and reinterpreted, and even governments and countries are forced to submit for their resources. Teotihuacan was the largest urban expression in pre-Hispanic Mexico. Aspects of economic, social, and political organization were combined in the almost perfect design of its spatial structure. In the projection and execution of the largest architectural program ever seen before, advanced architectural engineering and astronomical knowledge was applied. The state materialized the worldview shared by many Mesoamerican peoples of their time making this truly an axis mundi, an axis of the world and the place where men become gods. Thank you.